Good evening and welcome to the Arundel Camera Club virtual live stream for Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. My name is John Milliker and I'm the club president for the 2021-2022 season. The Arundel Camera Club was founded in 1957 and exists to promote the art, science, and education in all aspects and fields of photography. For more information, please visit us online at www.arundelcameraclub.org. We welcome you on our new meeting night, which is, was originally changed due to a very good meeting location opportunity with the Saverna Park Baptist Church. However, because our member and officer feedback, uh, we've decided that with the COVID variants, we'll remain virtual only for a little while longer and we'll reassess the virus and our members' comfort levels often so that we can try to get back to normal and meet in person again. When we do meet in person, meetings will be hybrid so that members who are not feeling well or are not comfortable coming out yet or maybe from out of town can still enjoy all the great programming the club has to offer. The club is extremely lucky to have such great members and understanding uh, who are understanding of the decisions we've made, and we always will prioritize safety of our members. If your comfort level allows it, we recommend you to get out and photograph before winter arrives. Be sure to follow all safety recommendations in your state and county. Our new field trip team has done an amazing job at finding great opportunities, and we hope that you'll take advantage of the amazing field trips that they've lined up. And before our program tonight, here's our program's chair, Christine, with the upcoming schedule. Hello, and welcome, and... I don't have the thing open. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, let me let me help you out, Christine. Uh, I, don't, I didn't share my screen to you. Uh, tonight is our, our our programs with uh, Mike Thomas and Ron Pfeiffer on how to make the most of critiques and competitions. Next week, September 9th, 2021, uh, we will have a critique session led by Jerry Taylor. Now, because several of the the Camera Club members that that handle the streaming will be out uh, will be unavailable that night. Ron is going to be sending out a Zoom link, and I will I, I I I guarantee you this is kind of only a temporary thing, but it will not be streamed to Facebook. It will be streamed to Zoom. So make sure you are on our members list to be able to get that information. And then once that's done, we will upload that to YouTube. And then on Thursday, September sixteenth, we have a program by David Truzo on Adobe Lightroom. And then September twenty third is our first digital open contest. And remember, you need to be a you need to be a paid member with the Arundel Camera Club to participate in the contests and the critiques. And then on September thirtieth, twenty twenty one, is programmed by Les Picker on the story behind the image. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. Do you have anything else to say, Christine? Uh, don't forget about the field trip for September on September eighteenth to Gambrel State Park. Looks like a good one. Okay, well, let's turn it over. Christine, go ahead and turn it over to our programs for tonight. I'd like to welcome Mike Thomas and Ron Pfeiffer tonight, who is are doing a presentation on critiques and competitions. Welcome, Ron and Mike. Happy Thanks. to be here. Thanks, Chris. All right, are we sharing the screen uh, now, John? Yep, looks like we are. Okay, all right. Um. Mike and I are going to do tag team uh, through the evening here. And what we talked about last spring was that maybe we needed to kind of re refresh some of the stuff that many of us already know about uh, competitions. And much of it applies to critiques in, uh, in many ways, too. But we also want to get some mechanics down of uh, how to do the competition this year. Uh, a couple of things will be a little bit different. And lastly, we want to make sure that uh, – you all have a really productive, uh, positive uh, experience with this. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, critique sessions, which are brand new. And I'll do that in a minute. Um, Mike's going to talk a bit about the digital contest, and we're going to talk about the print uh, contest as well whenever that starts up. We'll talk about that in a bit. And then um, mainly we want to talk about how you can get ready and plan for a critique session and then also, what do you do to plan for these contests? Um, uh, by way of an anecdote, I joined a club uh, more than 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and uh, I didn't know that there was such a thing as points for a contest. I um, brought my contests in. I got, got a ribbon every now and then. brought my images in, got a ribbon every now and then, and I was really happy about it. But at the end of the year, I realized there were points. So... I had to change the way I was managing some of this. So for particularly for new folks, just a few uh, new things about that. So um, let's start off. And by the way, you'll see we've got a few examples uh, from some of our membership. Uh, Mike was able to pull from his files for, uh, here's a 
image from Chuck Gallegos and, and from Fred, both that are excellent examples. Winners from uh, within the last couple of years or so, I think. Mike, is that right? Yeah. Aran, I'm really looking forward to hearing about the uh, new critique sessions uh, that are that we're going to use uh, at the beginning of the year. So I think, you know, this is an opportunity for everyone to find out what they are and and, and why you'd want to participate or, or watch uh, what others are participating. This, this is exciting, so I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. Um, I, I discovered over the last year, uh, we... Uh, as your representative to the uh, Maryland Photography Alliance, that um, th probably fewer than half of the uh, clubs in in the alliance actually do contests as we do, and we've been doing them uh, since the Earth cooled, if I if I'm not uh, mistaken, and some of the other clubs have too. But many of the others do critique sessions, and uh, or they incorporate it with contests. But it's just a good way to get a, a low stress situation uh, with the photographers and with a somebody who has a lot of judging experience and a good way with talking through these images in some depth. And uh, where, where this has been done, it's more like what you see on this slide where uh, somebody brings in uh, a few prints, four or five people, sit it down, you have a critiquer and then you go back and forth and it's a conversation. So we're going to try to replicate that the best we can by way of Zoom for now. So uh, stay tuned. We'll see how it goes. Here are the dates for them this year, uh, September 9th, uh, coming up next week, the one we'll do on Zoom. And then um, John and uh, others, Mike and others, will be with us on October 7th. We'll be back on track with those on November 4th and, November, and December 2nd. So on each one of these uh, critiques, um, we're going to try this out the first time and I think the format has some promise. So we want to identify six photographers, could be novices, it could be unlimited uh, photographers, uh, and basically go on Zoom. You have six cells up here for the six photographers and you have uh, Jerry uh, Taylor who will be our uh, first uh, uh, first reviewer, our first critique uh, leader. And um, so basically, at randomly, we'll try to move around the table, uh, the virtual table, if you will, and give you uh, time with the uh, with Jerry. Jerry will maybe talk about all the four pictures you might bring, or uh, or one of them, uh, two of them. Maybe have enough information to. But it's a conversation, so you you can just come in and talk with him. He's somebody who's judged a lot of contests and have a, has a lot of opinions about that. Um, and so one, Mike, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask. So I saw a few weeks ago you sent out an email asking photographers to sign up. Uh, how's the yeah. response been? Have, have you got enough uh, people that have signed up? Well, I I have um, I have one opening for next uh, week that I need to fill, but I have several, uh, quite a number, large number of other people interested in doing this. Uh, I have had to make uh, reach out to folks, and I may do that if I don't have some volunteers. If you are interested. Just quickly, Ron, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you try to lean a little closer to your microphone? People are having difficulty hearing you. All right. Well, they're in my ears, my, <laughs> my microphone. We'll do the best we can here. My apologies. Sorry about that. Um, okay. No, thank you. That's important. Um, so let me know. Email me. Uh, call me if you are interested in being a part of this. Uh, it'll only be once a month. You, uh, the way it'll work is you'll be on camera, if you will, for the 15 minutes on your uh, on your images. But the other at the end, if we have more than, uh, than 15 minutes, uh, the other five photographers may want to talk with you or Jerry about some of the pictures. But we're, our priority is to give you a good solid 15 minutes with the judge. And this um, is and this is only open to paid members, correct? It's only open to paid members. That, that's a good point. But there's plenty of reason for everybody who watches the meeting on Facebook Live, as we're doing it tonight, other than next week, to be able to uh, watch the um, uh, and participate by way of Facebook Live and do register your questions in the chat area. So while we want to try to attend to everybody's questions, our main thing is the photographer and Jerry. Um, 
no winners, no ribbons, no losers, no points. So um, I don't need to read all of this, but basically they're really good judges who, who have a good reputation for talking more than one minute on a photo, which is what you get in a contest. And uh, we want to try to have them talk the language of judges. Sometimes we've not had judges talking about photographs in a way that you would understand. I've heard some, some come in and use some terminology that isn't consistent with what we know. So we're going to try to make that happen. Hey, Ron. Um, um, yes. You, you just made a really good point. Um, the reason that we decided to have six photographers is so that there's the time uh, to actually dig in on some of these images and stuff. Because if we had everyone in the club participate, there'd be way too many people, way too many images to get get through. And the, and the quality of feedback from the critiquer um, would be significantly less. Um, and just like a contest, watching these critiques, even if it's not one of your images, should be a valuable experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I started with uh, uh, Jerry. I called him, first of all, to be our first judge because he is extremely good and very patient and uh, very observant. And I think you'll uh, I think you'll find his comments to be very good. And the other uh, critiquers this fall will be uh, similarly good. Uh, right now, the, those are the only four sessions we have on the books uh, that will get us uh, up to 24 people, hopefully more as time goes on. Um, now, what we want to do is, uh, Mike, do you want to talk about the themes uh, and uh, and the contest, the digitals uh, coming up? Okay, Mike, I'm not hearing Mike, you. we can't hear you. You've silenced yourself. You would think after a year of this, I would learn to hit the unmute <laughs> button. All right, so we're going to transition from critiques over to uh, contest now. Um, my slide's going back. There we go. Uh, there we go. Perfect. All right. So, uh, you know, we alternate contests with open theme contests. So the first contest in September is open. Anything goes uh, as, as long as it's uh, Facebook safe. Uh, anything goes for that contest. It can be you know, it's a digital contest, it can, but it can be color, it can be monochrome, it can be a, a digital scan of some other in, interesting process, um, and any subject, portraits, landscapes, whatever. But we have four contests this year that are, have specific themes. Um, reflections in October, interesting perspectives in December, abstracts in February, and architecture in April. So let's go to the next slide. I think we dive in a little more on each of these, right? There we go. Nope, too many. Back one. Hey, there we go. Perfect. So again, October, our theme is reflections. This can be reflections in a mirror, reflections in a puddle, reflections uh, in a chrome bumper, uh, in, in reflections in a window, anywhere you see reflections, you know, not just your standard reflections of a bird in a water or something like that. Um, you, you know, any kind of reflections uh, would be good subjects for this. Um, you know, we've got three examples here from club members. Uh, the reflection of a car in a car uh, chrome bumper by Julie Bennett, uh, a reflection in a, a window by David Joyner. And it uh, looks like Fred created this one, uh, maybe flowers setting on a piece of black plexiglass or something to, to reflect the flowers. Uh, but, you know, let your creativity uh, 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 out and see what you can come up with. It can be found objects out in uh, out in uh, about town or in nature, or it can be something you create in your basement. Uh, uh, you know. So let's see. The next slide. I think we actually have the definition. So yeah, here's our definition. Uh, all these definitions are in the newsletter and on the website and they're being shared with the judges. So we're all starting with the same definition. Um, again, reflection, I won't read this to you. You can go back and read it to you. I've summarized it already. Um, one of the things, I'll, I'll just slip this in right now. One of the things that Ron has done is he led the creation of a guide 
for our judges that he's going to share with each judge uh, that talks about how contests work, what our expectations are on feedback, and what are the definitions for our themes uh, so that, you know, hopefully the, the judge will see that definition multiple times before uh, the contest. Of course, it's still in the, in the eye of the beholder, so often the, the judge's interpretation and ours don't necessarily match. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, the interesting perspectives, um, we've got three images we thought uh, represented interesting perspectives here. Um, we've got, it, it just turns out they're all architectural uh, kinds of images, but we've got one by David Joyner, one by uh, Jeremy Pfeiffer, Ron's uh, grandson, one by Paul Wilcox, but it's far, there's far more than just architecture kinds of perspectives. Let's go to the next slide. Mike, yeah. I might add, go ahead. when you, when you uh, uh, go to, you have your definition, but um, when you publish this in the newsletter, there's a link with each one of these that has a number of examples that you can use to look at. And I think your original uh, interesting perspectives definition made us think it was something other than standard eye level for a camera, right? Right. Right. So that's that's what we we have here in the definition. So we had to come up with, you know, the club voted on interesting perspectives, but they didn't define it. So we had to come up with some kind of definition. Um, and so we really started with anything not at eye level. So most photographers go out and they, sh you know, they shoot, sh you know, standing up straight out. They are they set their tripod up at eye level. Uh, so we started with not anything that's not at eye level. So get low, get high, shoot up, shoot down, uh, that kind of stuff. But it's it's there's so much more that you can do with this. Um, you know, my favorite are some of the photos where where uh, you take a picture of someone in the foreground and the sun is in the background and it looks like they're holding the sun or they're shooting basketball with the sun as the ball. You know, that's that's an interesting perspective. You know, there's, there's just a, I've seen pictures where someone was, uh, you know, laying uh, on a uh, on the road like they were stretched out and then they turn the picture sideways. Uh, when they presented it, it looks like they're hanging off the side of a building. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do here. So again, another opportunity to really let your creativity out. Any thoughts, uh, any more thoughts on that, Ron? No, I, you know, this is probably going to be the most um, unusual uh, theme we've had this year. So uh, it'd be a really good opportunity to get really creative, I think. Yeah. So again, like Ron said, if, if you go in the newsletter, there's a link for each definition that will take you out to Google Photos and will give you uh, a sampling of photos just using keywords. Um, so not all of them are going to be perfect matches to the definition, but to give you an idea of some of the things that might be reflections or interesting perspectives and things. All right, next slide. Abstract. Oh, this is a good topic, too, to let your imagination through. So we've got three images here, very different images. Um, the first one's by Ron. Ron, where is that? What is that? Uh, that's a band shell, and uh, I think it's Millennium Park in Chicago. Uh, that's uh, folded uh, stainless steel. It's beautiful. Yeah, so by, by zooming in and, and isolating, you've, you've created an image. We know it's metal, but, but beyond that, it's patterns, it's shapes, it's uh, shading and things like that. So that's great. Um, the next one's by Lewis. I have no idea. Maybe, maybe a loofah <laughs> that he took a picture of with some lighting on it. I'm not sure. Lewis um, says it's a bath sponge. He answered that go. over on bath Facebook. Sponge, okay. right? Yeah. Um, but again, being creative with subject matter and, and composition and stuff. And then uh, Charlie, an older one of our older club members here, I, that looks like, I don't know, bubbles on or on oil or maybe on, uh, on over maybe glass and water and, and oil on top of marbles. I don't know. But again, it's all colors and patterns and shapes. Um, you know, very, very abstract. Now, Let's go to the definition slide. Yeah, the next slide. and Mike, that's that's uh, that last one brings up a good example. We have had judges that come in and talk to, that are very narrow in what they ex accept as abstract images. If they can, in the most remote way, determine what it is, 
that's being photographed, they'll throw it out. Uh, you've had that experience too, I know. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, so th this is probably one of the hardest uh, categories to uh, photograph and one of the hardest for judges to judge. Uh, and that is the biggest problem we've had with abstract judges in the past is that if they can identify the, the original subject matter, uh, then they don't consider it abstract. That's a little too strict for my taste. And it's certainly mm -hmm. not in our definition. But again, it's, you know, it's art. It's in the eye of the beholder. And that may be how they learned what abstract photography is. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's again, it's about form, color, shape, yeah. texture, um, you know, material, it, uh, uh, you know, so I, I've seen some photos that I would consider abstract that you could clearly tell it was, you know, sharpened color pencils or something like that, but they were photographed in a way that was very abstract. Right. So this is a tough category to put some thought in it. And it's one of the reasons we put it in February to give you some time. All right, next, next category. Here we go. This is a great one too. Um, although I feel like we're all at an unfair disadvantage because David Joyner is a expert <laughs> at architectural photography. Uh, we've got three, three photos here. Two of them are from David. Uh, the interesting thing is a lot of the architecture photos could also be in the reflections competition mm -hmm. because they often involve glass and buildings and reflections. Um, so we've got th uh, three images, two by David and one by Greg Hockle. I have no idea what Greg photographed here. It may be a uh, airport or something here. And I can't tell if that's a reflection or if it, the, it just looks that way, but it is, you know, it's definitely uh, uh, architectural, um, you know, by some definitions, it could have been abstract, but I think you can tell too much what it is. Uh, but it is a lot of shape and pattern. Um, let's go to the... Uh, oh, and you know, that's interesting on the right, and you'll see David does this a lot. He takes a picture and then he turns it or he angles it. So he doesn't necessarily give you a straight up picture of a building when he does his architecture work. Um, so that's, that's kind of creativity on his part. Um, so let's see the next slide, I think. We have a little better definition here. Yeah, architecture. It's any building, bridge, uh, you know, any structure. Um, it can be a small part of it where you've just zoomed in on a piece of it. It can be a, the whole thing. Um, it can be a very unique building, uh, you know, so uh, good good contest. Uh, the reason this is at the, in April is because uh, uh, we wanted people, we were hoping the, that uh, the COVID restrictions would die down and people would be able to travel. Mm -hmm. And I'd give people a chance to get out and uh, and take some, some architecture photos if they didn't have any already. Um, so I think that's our last theme. Okay. I think one of the challenges with architecture photography is that there are buildings all over. And you can take a straight shot of something, even if it's a really interesting building, and just and won't have any wow to it. And uh, these tricks, and not tricks, but these uh, approaches and strategies that Mike is talking about, turning angles and so on, getting portions of it, something that maybe is even a little abstract, makes it a whole lot more interesting for a judge. So you do want to catch the judge's eye and make sure it's something that's, uh, that's unique and interesting. It's something you'd like to look at if it were on your wall. Can I so, just, Kathy, can I just add something? I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say we have a program on October 14th by Chris Spielman about uh, indoor uh, architectural photography. And then David Joyner is going to talk about outdoor photography in January, on January 13th. So we do have programs that are going to address two of the types of architectural photography, just to put that out there for club members to know. Although... Uh -huh. Chris Spielman does not want his to to be recorded, so uh, that he's asking that people try to be present for his in October. So just putting that out there. Now, if I can, if I can break in, uh, anybody listening, if you're not currently on our membership list, um, what we're trying to work with these people are, it will be open to everyone on the Facebook group live. It will not be saved. But it will be saved on YouTube, but it will be an unlisted link that only the members on the on the membership email list get as long as they accept as long as they agree with that. So far, that's good. So if you are currently not a free or a paid member of the Arundel Camera Club, go over to uh, ArundelCameraClub.org and hit that membership button and make sure you're on our 
on our mailing list so you don't miss anything. Um, one last thing before we get to the next topic. Uh, Kathy Hockle said that, that that picture of Greg's was taken in inside, inside a building in Tokyo. Oh, wow. So. Um, Mike, uh, we, we're going to move on to digital photos, uh, digital contest next. And um, I would like some uh, benefit of your knowledge on this. We've got some rule changes with uh, digitals this year over last year. So uh, you've been instrumental in helping us try to make some sense of that. So we do have eight digital contests as we had last year. Um, we can do them online as we uh, as we did last year and all that. But um, and, and as last year, there'll be novice and unlimited photographer contests. However, Mike, maybe you can lay out how they how they differ from last year. Yeah, so this for our older members, we're going to go back to our normal uh, digital contest uh, format, except it's online. Uh, for our new members, uh, uh, last year we we had uh, uh, expanded it, and we had uh, two digital contests. We had one for monochrome digital images and one for color digital images, and we let people submit two in each. It just confused everyone. It, it just uh, uh, made the scorekeeping an issue. So we're going back to the way we traditionally done it. It's simpler for points and, and advancing in the club uh, and less confusing. So you'll be able to submit three images per contest. You'll submit them either as unlimited or novice, depending on which class you're in. Um, those images uh, can be, they can be any, it can be monochrome or color, it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, one of the concessions we made for last year is you may re-enter um, photos that won in monochrome digital last year. This is the one exception. You may re-enter them this year uh, since they didn't count for your long-term points uh, or advancement in the club last year. Um, so we're going back to our normal digital contest, three images per month for digital contest. Um, and uh, that should that should uh, be a lot less confusing. And, the, and those these points uh, earned this year will go to your lifetime point status. However, the mono digital contest from last year did not. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Any uh, let's, you want to talk? And this is one I think that uh, Mike, you had some particular. Concerns about is making sure that the digital images are ready to go when we get them. Yeah, so um, Bob and I will will help Ron with the gather the images and stuff. Uh, but when it, it comes time for the contest, you'll need to send in your three digital images to the contest at arundelcameraclub.org email address. Um, you should receive an email from one of us that says we received your images, they're properly named and they're properly sized. If you do not receive an image, please reach out to us so that we can figure out whose junk folder they ended up in and why we didn't get them, why they were lost on the internet. Um, and uh, it's best to send your images as an attachment to the email, not embedded inside the email. And for Mac users, it's best if you zip, put all your three images into a compressed zip folder and put that, uh, attach that to your uh, email. Um, and as that just, uh, that works better for those of us that use Windows computers, because, you know, Windows and Macs don't, don't always play nicely together. Although Ron uses a Mac, so it probably doesn't, wouldn't cause Ron any issues. Um, and that, we always have this issue, but we're still, I know we discussed changing it, but we're still sizing our images 1,024 on the long side uh, for the contests. Um, and then they should be JPEG files. Uh, when this issue came up at the end of the year last year, the size of the file, 1024 will be a decent image for um, online display this way. However, we're going to give the judge a, a high res, your 1024 high res image for them to look at it on uh, on their computer. So it's it's directly off of the file on their laptop or computer. So they've got the very best image they might possibly have for judging. And uh, it would be nice if uh, the pictures on uh, Jitsi or on Zoom or whatever would be 
perfect, but they're not. So that seems to be for now the best way to do it. And I haven't talked to any any other clubs in the state that are doing other than ten twenty four or something similar to that at this point. Yeah, and and that's a great point because um, the broadcast images there's always uh, a degree of risk and quality and bandwidth. So you'd hate for uh, you know Facebook to drop the quality on your your image, but but. Uh, uh, to send someone else's picture in at, at great quality. So the judge having a local copy of the images, they get to see the real image. Uh, now we can't control whether they've got their machine calibrated properly or not, but most right. of them are judges and know how to do that. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a, a, a way to do the, the contest and not have uh, uh, Jitsi or Zoom or Facebook uh, distort your images uh, uh, on the way on the way to the judge we have a couple questions for you gentlemen fred okay. is asking if one of your black and white got end of year picture can you still use it yes and susan asks do the critique images need to be 1024 on the long side also y yes please uh, that will uh, that will if it's bigger than that it'll give our equipment the indigestion so yes please and that's it. But uh, and and I have to say uh, I, I missed this major point, I guess, with the critique images. When you send the critique images in, they're not around any theme. It's open. It's anything that you feel you want to discuss with the judge. It can be something that's a work in progress. You're trying to get it to the next level. So it doesn't have to be a finished, polished uh, competition image unless you want want it to be. Yeah. So, Mike, you want to talk about uh, naming? Sure. Uh, so our our uh, older members should all all know this by now. But for our new members, um, when you name your file for the contest, uh, we start with an N for novice or a U for unlimited as the first character in the name, with an underscore, and then you put the title of your image because we read titles during the contest. Uh, and then you put an underscore and your initials. And then, of course, the .jpg at the end. Um, and then we have a list that translates all the initials to actual names. Um, but uh, that's, how, that's how we require the images to be formatted. Um, and so if you send it and it looks like uh, it came straight off a camera, we won't know who it belongs to when we're going through 100 images during a contest or something like that. Uh, and if it doesn't have the URN, we won't know which contest it should be in. Uh, and if you don't have your initials, we won't know who earned the ribbon. <laughs> Well, this is uh, this is one thing, as I said earlier, that I did not get uh, uh, any orientation to, and I just didn't even think that you collected points. So um, for those of you who haven't done competitions with us last year, uh, you're assigned uh, points by uh, eight, eight points if you got first place ribbon, a blue ribbon, uh, second place, six points, four, two, and down, the uh, honorable mention gets one point. Um, one of the things that we're concerned about is we not uh, keep bringing images in uh, by um, that you've submitted over and over again. If you uh, lost on an image or it got an honorable mention, it can be resubmitted uh, a couple more times. But if it's placed first, second, third, or fourth, it's dead. It cannot be brought back. So you get your point uh, points one one time, if you will. Uh, Mike, do I miss anything on that? Uh, no, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, but what happens with those points is you accumulate them, and the person, the photographer with the most points, uh, whether it's in color, digital or prints or um, unlimited or novice, the, the photographer with the most points at the end of the year gets trophies and plaques. But they also go towards your advancement uh, uh, from novice uh, to unlimited. That's 50 points. But you can also go up to, to, to silver, gold, platinum, and to master photographer. There's only three masters in the club right now. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's why those points, uh, if, if uh, advancing and scoring and winning uh, 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 
uh, are your thing, that's that's uh, what what happens with those accumulated points. Yeah, I was just talking with a, a friend from uh, Colorado today, and um, they asked whether uh, I was going to continue to compete, and uh, and I and I think I will. But you know, the issue is I've been doing this for ten years, but if I stop submitting images in for competitions, I get sloppy, you know, and being able to bring it into a judge who's going to be very tough on you uh, kind of makes you think twice when you go back into processing and making a final image. So it does keep you keep you sharper. And, uh, and I think that's probably something in mind for, for all of us. Now, this is the tough one. Quick question. Uh, right. Two quick questions. Sorry, Ron. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Doug, I'm not sure exactly what he's asking, but he's asking what's the point count for each of those? I guess, I guess he, the, the certificates right. maybe? No, for, I think he's talking about, yeah, going up to uh, oh, gold, each silver. Let me look that up and I'll, I'll answer that in a second. And then Kathy is asking who the three master photographers are. Uh, so Ron is, is a master in several things. Chuck Gallego is a master in everything. Uh, and then I'm, I'm a master in uh, a couple of categories. Uh, I think that's it. Is there anyone, anyone else? Uh, I don't, I don't, I'd have to go look at the list, yeah. but I think it's down to, to just us in terms of active members. Uh, well, Mike's looking up uh, this other, why don't we go on and talk a little bit about uh, monthly print co uh, contests. Uh, we would start those up in January, and these are the dates for the for the uh, January, February, March, and April print contest. Uh, if we can start them back up, now, obviously you have to do that with a judge and with uh, the prints right in front of them, and someone keeping score. So uh, at the minimum, you need three or four people to make that happen. It's really much more advantageous if you've got this happening in front of a full audience. So our, our hope is that by the time we get to January, we can actually get back together and restart these. So um, John said earlier, we're gonna keep evaluating where we go as a club, depending on the, uh, the health issues and so on. And um, Mike, do you want anything before I jump onto the next slide then? Oh, I, I can't wait till we have the ability to do prints again. Me uh, to me, prints require a much better photo than, than digital image. So sometimes you can get away with cropping and submitting a, a image uh, for digital that you would never get away with in a good quality print. Um, and so to me, the prints really set apart uh, some of the quality on, on images. So I'm really looking for, and particularly I like black and white monochrome uh, photo, photos, you do too. And uh, so, um, yeah, definitely uh, uh, hoping that we'll, we'll be able to get back together in the, in the uh, spring. And Mike, I saw you posted all the certificate numbers over on Facebook, but for our, those watching also on YouTube, can you please read those sure. off? Sure. So uh, this is above, this is once you've already received, going from novice to unlimited, 50 more points will get you a bronze certificate, 100 points, a silver certificate, 150 points, gold certificate, uh, 200 points, a platinum certificate, and 250 points will be a master certificate. And we do that for digital, color prints, and monochrome prints. Thank you. Kathy okay. says, all of you inspire me whenever you mentioned who the masters were. Well, let's take a look at um, what you can put in this year. We'd like to have uh, novice and unlimited uh, photographers, separate contests uh, in, in an evening. So in print evening, we'll have uh, two novice contests and two unlimiteds. So black and white in color in each. Um, you'll be able to submit up to three color prints and three mono prints each month. If you think of it this way, if you're trying to compete in digital and print, when we get to January, you're going to have to come up with nine images a month if you're going to compete in all the contests for unlimited or novice, whichever you're in. Um, again, those photos, uh, you don't want to be use them. You don't want to be using them more than um, if they've used them more than, I'm sorry. 
you can use them uh, if they've been used no, up to two times in the past. So we're kind of limited about that. And uh, same way with honorable mentions. Uh, so losers and honorable mentions. Um, the Mike, uh, jump in here if I'm not making any sense, <laughs> which may be the case. <laughs> My apologies. No, you're fine. We'll give them a refresher too when we do prints again. Yeah. So go ahead. Um, wanted to talk about. I know this is many of you are going to forget this talk by the time we get to uh, December, but. Um, what are the rules about prints? Well, the print plus the mat, as the ones in the picture here, can uh, be no larger than 20 inches on one side. Mike, now you and I had a conversation on that the other day, and originally I put into the slide what is uh, 13. By, you said 13, 13 by 19, uh, which technically is smaller than 20 on the long side. Yeah. But uh, when you go to Michael's, you'll pick up a, a mat that looks sort of like this. It works for an 11 by 14 print. And uh, But uh, a lot of us will cut our own mats perfectly, but don't make them outside dimension any more than 20 inches on one side. And that's that's purely so that it fits in the lighting box. Absolutely. That's, that's yeah. all it is. Okay. Um Here's something about the prints. Uh, basically, approach getting the print ready uh, as if you're going to frame it. And we've had a few judges come through and look at these things and say, you know, if you care about the picture, don't make it so crappy looking. You want it to be polished as if you're going to put it in a, uh, in a gallery show or something. So there are two parts of it. You want the mat around the image in the front, and like in uh, these examples and you choose black and white, you can do color, I guess, Mike, we don't have a prohibition against color, but um, that's, judges usually don't like color, do they? Well, judges seem to favor the white or off-white. Um, yeah. I've used black mats, or used to use black mats. I thought that they, there were some images that black mats did really yeah. well on. Uh, I've only ever met one judge that preferred black mats. Um, yeah. And then we had we had one club member that did quite well. He he had his professionally matted, which is an option, although it's mm -hmm. expensive. And he used colored mats that complemented the the color the the photo. So use at your own risk. <laughs> uh, I've been criticized by judges for putting in um, mats that are double matting or some other col color other than black and white. Uh, they start. I think most of them like to have it just plain and traditional like this. And another really key piece of this that uh, we hear a lot about from um, other photographers who submitted images is put a backing board on your image. Uh, you need to make sure that you're protecting your image, your, your uh, print from uh, somebody else's image and make sure that somebody else is not going to get uh, snagged by, the, uh, by a raw photograph uh, taped up on a mat in the back. Uh, got a lot of criticisms from judges over um, images that were not straight in the, uh, if you're going to tape it, make sure it's good and tight and it doesn't uh, fall and move. Make sure that the uh, it's straight because they look at every little detail. And lastly, uh, I use sometimes foam board for mat, uh, uh, backing rather, but uh, it gets a little thick that way. It's probably just as well to use mat board. Um, and of course, you see the little scribble on the upper left-hand corner. That's the uh, tag, which we'll talk about in a minute. Mike, hey, Ron, Ron, just no nothing. Uh, John, Chris, are you still with us? I... Yeah, we're here. Okay, your pictures went away, and I thought I saw someone put their hand up to to speak. <laughs> oh, um, all right. John did have a question for you guys. Are we still pushing the issue with judges that they should be judging the image, not the mat? Yes, but you can only go so far with that because many of them are looking for a piece of art that's that you care about. And uh, I think one of the comments we got from judges last year is they're looking at the picture, but they really get distracted when the mat just isn't uh, neat and clean and uh, and square. Um, Mike, you want to add to that or not? Well, yeah, I've, it's it's certainly a recurring issue with judges. Uh, you would hope that that would be a secondary concern, but I do know some judges judges that are like, uh, you know, 
it doesn't matter what we tell them. If the mat uh, doesn't look good, they get they uh, they hold it against you. So that's a tough one. It's did we put that in the guide? I I forget, Ron. I uh, let's go back and check. I don't remember. Yeah, we'll double check. Yeah, but thanks for raising that, John. Um, this is uh, unfortunate. I apologize for the red color. I'm new to this version of. Uh, PowerPoint. I couldn't figure out how to change it, so I figured we'll live with it. So in, in any event, um, make sure you have a nice label. Uh, you can get a sheet of stickers. Uh, you can hand print it. I, I usually type mine just because I've figured out how I could do that relatively easily and uh, put that on the back. And uh, so the date, title of the image, um, and so on and so forth. Are there any questions about any of this uh, any of the print stuff to date. We'll give it a minute to catch up in Facebook. Okay. okay, you can go ahead and move okay. on. And if we get All a question, right, we'll I'll see. ask you. Um, this is something uh, I alluded to at the beginning is planning. So among the things you want to do is uh, you know what uh, you know what your uh, themes are ahead of time. That's why Mike publishes them well in advance, so he can put them out there and start uh, combing through your uh, stacks of images to find things that might work for the contest. But um, what many of us do is once we know when these themes are running, we kind of build a work calendar, if you will, so we know. Uh, what images we need to have ready and we can get them ready uh, on time uh, for the for the contest um, and not press it up push it up against the last day one more thing for yeah i think mike saw the same comment jackie is reminding us about the arrow to show which way is up for the photographs on the label yeah that, and that we usually draw an arrow on the back of the photo that points up and that's going to be really important with abstracts, reflections, and yes. interesting perspectives that you know which way the artist intended the picture to be right. uh, shown. Okay, uh, here are a couple of things that, uh, for, for those of you, again, who've done this for a long time, you're probably already doing this, but some just some hints. Um, I have a binder that has uh, the photos I'm thinking about submitting and uh, I build a little table and uh, I'll put thumbnails of the pictures there into each of the categories as I'm thinking about it. And uh, so I have a hard copy on my desk. Um, I also um, keep really careful track of anything I want because A, I can't use those images again unless they're uh, an honorable mention and I want to make sure I limit it to a couple of times. And B, uh, if you're trying to see where your points are in the course of a year or over years, you got to have, it's good to have some good records in that. There are way better tools than what I use, but you should keep track of it. But uh, one of the things that's been real, really valuable for all of you using Lightroom is go create folders. And I uh, have a little picture in the uh, over here, here uh, under Arundel Camera Club. 2021, 2122 uh, year. Um, it's down here at the bottom. But anyway, the categories, abstracts, architecture, interesting perspectives, open, then possibles, uh, just some things that I'm thinking about maybe to put in, but you can just drop them in there and then go back and assess your images and find which ones are your really good ones over time. Mike, I know you do a really good job of planning and so on. Do you have any other suggestions? So I do it slightly differently. Um, I create smart collections in Lightroom hmm. and I keyword my images. So right now I have a collection for abstracts, a collection for interesting perspectives, a uh, collection for architecture, but I also keyword tag my photos with words like architecture, perspective, abstract. And so I just go click on those, those, uh, um, collections and it pulls up every image in my whole Lightroom that's tagged abstract or or whatever it's tagged. Um, 
Now I normally narrow it down to the last year and then I use flags and, and uh, 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 stars to narrow it down to the ones I want. Uh, the other thing I do is I use a keyword to tag my winning photos. So I know that a photo's already won, so don't, don't re-enter it. A couple comments over on Facebook. Uh, John says, another thought, I know because I'm, a ter I'm terrible at it. Make sure, especially with prints, to save a properly sized digital file to give Mike for the newsletter if you win. Yeah. Yes, yes. Excellent point. That, that helps a lot. Uh, it's even better when you send it to me and I don't have to ask you for them. <laughs> and Doug Wood says, tags work better than folders. And Lewis says you can also use Adobe Bridge in the same way. Yeah, there, there are a number of these uh, editing uh, tools have uh, management, file management uh, programs you can adapt for that. Uh, so all of those are really great ideas, but it's pretty critical on whatever tool you use that you kind of pay attention to um, categories and so on. And um, Planning ahead will save um, a little bit of chaos in the few days before you have to turn these in. Um, Mike, this is an area, I think it's your area of expertise, isn't it? Well, let's see. Um, so when you're you're preparing your, your image, this is really about, uh, uh, in part, it's about composition, but it's also about uh, putting care into the final image. So, you know, how you crop the image, and in particular when you mat an image for a print contest uh, is important. Uh, you know, you want to remove distractions. I see a lot of uh, photographers, and I've been guilty of this myself, where I'll have something on the edge of the, of the photo. I'm not even looking at the edge because my subject's, you know, over on, on the rule of thirds somewhere in the photo. Um, and then a lot of photo photographers, you know, they do stuff in Photoshop uh, or Lightroom to edit their photos. And sometimes when you do that, if you're not careful, you'll you'll make marks and, and uh, pixelizations and things like that in your image uh, that that the judge may notice. And I know one of the things that John does that drives me up a wall is he looks at images uh, a lot brighter than you intended them to. Uh, so he'll see things that uh, uh, you never intended him to see because you thought on your monitor, the way your monitor was calibrated, that was in the shadows, that was dark or something like that. And he'll brighten the image up and go, look, you cut and pasted that, that's two different photos, or you edited this out, or you or you cloned this out. Uh, he can see those quite easily. So that's a good trick to, to actually police your image is to have a look at it a little brighter than, uh, than, you would, than you're gonna submit it to see if there's any issues there. Uh, you can also, some of these things you can fix, like if it's a noisy photo, there's lots of great photo or processing software out there to, to reduce the noise in your image and things like that. Uh, and then uh, you can compose your photo. You know, you can put your own sky in the image, you can use your own textures in the image to overlay. But our rule is you have to have been the person who, who created all of the images you use. So if you put a sky in your in your landscape image, it, it should be a picture, a sky picture that you took, that you're putting into over a landscape picture that you took. Uh, that's our rule. You basically should have originated, you know, and all of the images need to originate from some kind of photographic process. Um, so it shouldn't be something that you drew in Photoshop, you know, artwork. Uh, it should actually have been something that originated as a photo. Uh, any photo process, but a photo. Over on Facebook, John says you can use an adjustment layer before saving to crank up brightness or contrast to see the tool marks. Then once they are fixed, delete the adjustment layer. Okay. Um, Thanks, John. Uh, Mike's point about the, the composite images, uh, we do permit it. There are clubs that do not, and there are clubs that allow you to use uh, bought over the internet uh, texture layers and other things like that. So uh, be real clear when you do your images that you use your content, but you can composite it. Um, okay. 
Yeah, we decided a long time ago we couldn't police photoshopping of images. So if you're going to do it, it's just going to stand on the merits of how well you did it, if it looks good or not to the judge. Okay. Now, here are just a few thoughts, and uh, I want to sh share this. As a, these are some of the things that we do, but um, you don't have to. But uh, in trying to decide what you're going to submit, uh, many of us will walk around with our images on our phone or um, in a folder or something, and talk to somebody randomly in the family. Um, I know years ago, my wife was an artist and I would uh, work on a picture. I would take it upstairs and I'd show it to her and she'd say, that's a piece of junk. I can't believe you're going to try to submit that. I go back down to the basement and work on it some more. She was very tough, but you don't want to go to somebody who's going to say, oh, it's lovely. You know, get somebody who's tough. And in the end, however, you got to decide whether you're going to submit it, but it's good to have that advice positive or negative. Uh, one of the standard tools that uh, one of my friends uses is the dining room uh, table uh, review. It basically print, print them out, throw them on a dining room table, and every time you go by it, take a look at it. And uh, if you see something there that starts to bother you or grab you or whatever, you know, you can go back down. But if you rely on looking at it one time, one time only, you're going to miss something invariably. I've had to have happen repeatedly. Um, I want to move over here. Um, one of the things that we're seeing a lot uh, is the, uh, the issue of halos because um, there's a bright area and a dark area and there's so much manipulation that you have a little, little white line around a, a dark edge around, along a, a sky or something like that. Um, it's one of the things that the judges are oftentimes looking for is are the eyes in focus in other areas. But if you have a, a portrait, you need to make sure that those eyes are in focus and really clear. And as Mike said, there's plenty of software out there that will make it happen for you. Um, anything else there, Mike? No, I think you nailed it. Okay. Um and here's another feature that just, just thinking about it. You might have a central subject, but you might have some other objects around it to help point uh, the eye to the main subject. You may want to take time to look at those objects and see if they're light enough or dark enough to do the job. Um, so some of those details are really excellent, but uh, they, they may not be distracting, but they'll be more effective otherwise. But this one I've heard uh, from a whole lot of photographers over time. You know, all these rules that you're hearing about things such as rule of thirds, leading lines and all that. They're all great rules to apply. Uh, Donna Flynn's picture of the fence here. Uh, I remember when she brought that into a contest. That's one of the most beautiful pictures, creative and similar with Kathleen's photograph over here. Uh, she, Kathleen, applied uh, the rule of thirds see the, the sky, the mountain, and the foreground. Um, and Donna was looking at the uh, looking at the leading lines here. Both of them are just stunning photographs. But there are so many good photographs that are run contrary to this. So don't be afraid to break the rules is, I guess, the bottom line. Um, Mike, I'm ready to move to the next one if you have any thoughts on the rules. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I think rules should be in quotes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cartier, Cartier Bresson, uh, I think, did a book or something on after writing the rules on how to break them. Um, I kind of got this slide. Uh, we talked, this is uh, by, by uh, way of many conversations I've had with Fred Venetia. And uh, Fred said it as well as anybody has, you know, when you're looking at a photograph, if it just jars you and jolts you, you feel like you've been struck by lightning when you look at it. If it's got wow factor, it's probably going to work for the judge. But, um, you know, you don't want to have just a really nice photograph that's really balanced and so on. The judges are looking for the wow. So it's worth your while to take time and try to get it to that level and ask yourself that critical question. Is it really going to have the, the impact? 
Yeah, I think that's a great point, Ron. Uh, in our judge's guide, there were two things we emphasize uh, along with a lot of others. By the way, the, the judge's guide's posted online. Y'all can see it if you'd like. Um, and we're sure we're open to suggestions on improving it. But um, two things that are important. Uh, the first and most important thing is that impact. When you look at the image and you go, oh crap, that's really nice, or I want to buy that, or something like that. Uh, the second we, we emphasize is you want to make sure when it is a themed contest, the photo actually abides by the theme. So in theory, a really good photo should not win if it doesn't fit the theme. <laughs> and that's really tough for some judges. Uh, yeah. they'll, they'll award a great looking photo regardless of the theme. So, you know, what can you do? A couple comments over on Facebook. Rich says, be careful about overdoing the wow. And Scott. That's excellent. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, the don't wump up the colors and don't overdo the contrast and so on. Uh, we went through that, you know, in the HDR era back in uh, the uh, 2012, 13. Some of us spent a lot of time making uh, some of these things absolutely outrageous. You don't want it to be unreal. And uh, so be real careful about that. I've seen a few pictures I really like lately that the color uh, has been pushed up right past the limit. And uh, so uh, anyway, I'll shut up. But that's that's a good point, Christine. You had another one there, too. Scott says, instead of calling the rule of thirds a rule, I th think of it as the statement of thirds. Excellent. Excellent. And Jackie says, did you think to suggest that comments about the equipment used is not part of the competition? That's a good point. That's a good well, point. we'll have to double check that. I'll look. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here's the, and one of the uh, most important things to me in a lot of conversations with uh, many of us uh, over at the high school after the meeting, we all walk out and some of us are just still in love with our picture. And even though a judge threw it out and you know, it's okay because in the end it's your photo. And if you believe in it, you need to submit it. And sometimes uh, the passion that you see in an image and the impact is going to, is, is going to go, is, is going to make it work. Uh, and if it's violating some rules and you just get some, something you, know, you, you think it's a good image, it probably is, but in the end, you're going to walk away, be disappointed sometimes with some images you absolutely love. There's always another judge next month. John says, for some, though, people might not know that their photo is blurry because of the focal length and shutter speed. Maybe they never learned that, but metadata EXIF checking will help. And then Bob says, unless you're Bob W. Yeah, so we've, we've been able to, uh, we haven't been able to avoid the judges having access to that kind of information um, so far, unless you strip the information out of your image when you submit it, which some of the club members do. Um, you know, as long as they don't judge the image based on things mm -hmm. that sound like, oh man, you got a really nice camera, a really big lens uh, or something like that. Uh, you know, if you think about this as a museum or a normal art contest, they don't have that information available to them. Um, but maybe they could use it in a constructive way saying, well, your image is blurry and maybe you should have raised your ISO or, or your shutter speed or something, you know. Uh, but anyway, it is a, it is a tri exposure triangle. <laughs> a couple more thoughts. John says, though, just like a photo and a mat, the impact should be first, looking at EXIF second. Well, I'll, let me let me just jump in here. Basically, exactly what Mike said. I, I think just like a photo and a mat, it should be impact first. If there's an obvious issue, there's something you need help with figuring out. If a judge bounces over to EXIF or your metadata, I, I think that could be really beneficial to to some. If, if you never learned that or maybe you've forgotten it. And Scott says, I want to see your pictures, not your cameras as I said at the last meeting. And yeah, I, and uh, I might add that when we do these, um, these critique sessions, um, I really, in, in my opinion, the conversation shouldn't be about the camera, and that, but it's a time when the 
there can be some back and forth about some of the uh, effects data or whatever with the with the uh, uh, critique leader at that time. So um, all, all of these are really good uh, vital comments. And, uh, you know, like Lewis's uh, way of putting it, if a photo works for you, that is what counts. And in, in the end, if it doesn't work for the judge, fine. It's, you know, it's your image. Exactly. All right, um, this is our last slide at this point. Um, if you want to get some more information, of course, Mike has done a stellar job of having it our, uh, on our website. I, think, I don't know a website in um, any camera club in the state that is as extensive and uh, well-organized as ours. So for heaven's sakes, go there and look this stuff up. Mike, you're going to put this PowerPoint there uh, or some version of it uh, in the next uh, few days, correct? Yeah, so in addition to being able to re-watch this on Facebook, and uh, I'm assuming John will post it to YouTube, the slides themselves we'll put on, uh, we'll upload to the website and I'll, I'll share a link to that. So in case you just want to look at the slides and not listen to Ron and I again. Yeah. And uh, the uh, email address contest at Arundel cameraclub.org is the same we've used in the past for submitting photo images. Um, probably if you want to talk to Mike or me or any of the rest of us about with any questions, emails to our regular email addresses is probably good. This doesn't necessarily fly directly into my mailbox. And I, I think with you too, Mike. We do have a question for you, Ron. Um, Susan okay. is asking for the critique night. Can the interviewer be given the original quote image instead of one that you've already worked? Well, at this point, if you're if that's what you want to give to the uh, critique leader and have the conversation about that, you, that's absolutely fine. If you want to give them a before and after, that's fine too. But basically. It's your time with somebody who really knows a bit about this. And we've been careful to pick out uh, critique leaders who I think are going to really be uh, be productive and be able to have uh, and be flexible and, and have those kind of conversations. It's not about one minute of feedback like we're getting from each of our uh, uh, contests. Yeah, I, I think... Um... While, while you might want to submit some finished images because you want some feedback on those, I think uh, you'll get more uh, valuable input. We'll, we'll have to wait and see if you uh, submit works in progress and things like that. Um, you know, if you, if you only submit your very best photos, it's, it's like a contest. And, and mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to give you that. You're, you're just looking for compliments. Uh, I, this is really an opportunity to get some honest feedback. Uh, so I don't think necessarily submitting your, your best finished work is, is going to get you the best feedback, but you know, whatever you want. When we're up and running with these critique sessions, I really hope that we have, um, uh, a lot of folks who are not, uh, are not participating, uh, not among the six watching this because, uh, like the, with the contest, I think it's the conversation back and forth that we're all going to learn something from. I, I know I always have from uh, the conversation of other people's photographs and uh, contests we've had in the past. This should be even better, I would think. Over on okay. Facebook, Lewis says, a session like this is what is really needed at the beginning of the season. More value for the new members. Okay. Thank you. And uh, we, uh, I hope that... Um, None of the new members are scared off by this. We have, it sounds like we have a whole lot of rules, but in the end, we just want to make sure that uh, you have a really good experience with, um, with contests. Uh, for many of us, uh, learning how to be a better photographer wasn't something we got out of uh, a photography magazine or reading a book uh, or just going out on our own. It was getting direct feedback on what you uh, did and going back and working on a photograph and bringing it back again and seeing if that's going to make a difference. Well, and I think one of the issues we've had in the past is we've lost a lot of new club members after their first contest. They showed up with their images, they were all excited, and the judge critiqued them with one minute or less and threw them out, or they didn't win a, win a ribbon the first time or something like that, and they got frustrated. Uh, 
you know, Ron and I have lost far more contests than we've won. And, and it's about turning that into a uh, learning experience and having fun with it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when you're losing, it doesn't feel like you're having fun with it, but it, but you learn more from it sometimes. Right, Mike? <laughs> oh, yeah. Christine, are we done with uh, are we done with those uh, those questions? Do we want to go ahead and close the meeting? Yeah, that's all we have. Unless you guys have anything anything more? No. All right. Well, thank you all for for joining us. Don't miss next week's program, which is our first critique session, and it will be held by photographer Jerry Taylor. Now, remember, this meeting will be Zoom only. Keep an eye out from uh, an email from Ron on that link. It will not be broadcast to Facebook. Uh, but it will be it will be recorded and put up on YouTube. So make sure you're a friend of our YouTube channel as well. And then on September 16th, we'll be back to normal on Facebook. Now remember, this is valuable information to both uh, to both the critiquers and our other members that that can watch and see what the critiquer is going to talk about for all these images. And remember that only paid members are eligible for the contest and critiques, while free members, as I said, can learn a lot by hearing those on others' photography. Uh, of course, we recommend becoming a paid member for the low yearly price of $40 and having your photography commented on a critiqued. And personally, I feel that's one of the best ways to really up your photography game. For more information on membership, please go to arundelcameraclub.org and click on the side menu labeled Membership. Uh, note that your check must clear before you can participate in any of these paid membership programs. So make sure you get your forms filled out and check sent ASAP. And I believe that's it. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next week.